Wow, thanks, Vicky. And all you guys, this has actually uh, turned into something very special. Mark and I were just talking about how this uh, today uh, with you guys here has changed our lives. We, uh, <laughs> you know, it's true, we were talking about how our menstrual cycles are <laughs> Hours. Don't drag different. me into your bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go right to your segment. Of the <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yeah, well, I'll just, I'll just dive right in, I suppose. Uh, I do want to uh, just um, uh, talk about Dan Dion's photography, because it was the genesis of the book and did drive the narrative as well. Dan is a uh, brilliant portrait photographer and really respects comedians, really respects uh, comedians and, and views them as artists, not just, uh, you know, clowns. And um, his work is really evocative and really quite beautiful. Um, Anyway, that's just a rough, rough idea. Some of his stuff, it's quite, it's quite beautiful, and the book is, the book is as much about his photography that it, as it is about the text. And um, because he photographs comedians, uh, as um, George Carlin said, uh, from the inside out, um, his work is really evocative and really thoughtful. And so, uh, in approaching the interviews, uh, I tried to do a similar kind of thing. So I didn't do interviews. I didn't do anything journalistic or straight narrative. We just really sat around and chatted. And then I would take pieces uh, from the interviews that I thought said something interesting about these artists, their work, or um, their, their backgrounds, or how they got where, where they are now, uh, that I thought was inspirational and interesting and kind of surprising. So a lot of it is that. But um, the basic premise of the book, um, and the reason for the title, uh, let me read a little bit from the intro, if I may. Number one mustache brother, Pop Harley, he take it away. He in the slammer, he up the river, he in the clink, he jailbird. That's how Lou Ma starts the Mustache Brothers shows now. Five members of the Burmese special branch showed up at Pop Harley's house one day and let him away, because he told a joke. He said, in the past, thieves were called thieves. Now, they're called government workers. <laughs> For that, they gave Pop Harley seven years in prison, hard labor. Waleed Hassan was famous for his comedy series on Iraqi television called Caricature. In it, he mocked coalition forces and insurgents, poked fun at the poor security, long gas lanes, and, and the chaos of Iraqi government since the US-led invasion. For that, someone gave Waleed Hassan a bullet through his head. Stephen Colbert performed at a black tie dinner in Washington before America's press and media, five-star generals, senators, congressmen, the Supreme Court, and the most powerful government leader in the world. To the media, he said, Fox News gives you both sides of every story, the president's side and the vice president's side. <laughs> and he said, over the past five years, you journalists were so good about tax cuts, about WMD intelligence, about the effects of global warming. We Americans did not want to know, and you had the courtesy not to try to <laughs> <laughs> Mere feet away from the president, he said, you always know where this president stands. He believes the same thing Wednesday that he believed on Monday, no matter what the hell happened on Tuesday. <laughs> For that, they gave Stephen Colbert a big fat paycheck. <laughs> That's the kind of country America is. There always have been and always will be people who object and try to silence it, and people who will write letters of, uh, letters of complaint, boycott advertisers, uh, products, and cancel magazine and newspaper subscriptions. But overwhelmingly, America loves to criticize itself. If a nation can be said to have DNA, that fact is in America's. It's no secret that one of the architects of both the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of these United States, Benjamin Franklin, was himself a satirist, and a damn good one too. He created lots of biting satire and confrontational humor about the things he felt needed a good going over in this country, and he printed up his own pamphlets loaded with the stuff, because even back then, newspapers couldn't be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> even back then, on the still blistered heels of founding a new nation and great experiment in freedom and self-government, a lot of the press was pretty content to leave well enough alone, avoid controversy. Mm -hmm. To criticize America is to love it. It's part of the eternal vigilance that freedom demands. To criticize America is as American as apple pie purchased at Walmart, that you really shouldn't eat because you're looking like you could stand a few pounds there, Mr. American. Um, 
Why, you may ask, oh, I'm sorry, here, we've called the artists in this book satiristas. First, because it's kind of funny. <laughs> but also because, like the theme of this book, it's satire. Kind of, sort of. As kind of, satire, as kind of, sort of satire goes, it's not bad. It's not great, but it's not too shabby. <laughs> it is self-mocking. I mean, we're talking about people who want to have fun and make us all laugh. But satiristas brings to mind Che Guevara back before he got into the t-shirt business. <laughs> conjures this scrappy band of freedom fighters gathered in the wooded hills overlooking La Palacio del Governmento Mi Malo. <laughs> or something like that. Furtively, furtively exchanging information and strategically planning a revolution. But the satiristas' approach to revolution is nothing like that. First of all, it's decidedly nonviolent. It harms no one's person or property, and these revolutionaries couldn't agree on any strategy if their lives depended on it. <laughs> there is a reason there has never been a comedian's union. <laughs> they couldn't agree on where the goddamn apostrophe goes in comedian's union. <laughs> I couldn't even agree on it, and I'm writing this myself. <laughs> Why, you may ask, should we be interested in what a bunch of comedians have to say about anything? They're comedians. Why should we take anything that they have to say seriously? Well, first of all, to a person, everyone in this book is brilliant. They just are. To be honest, most comedians are smarter than the average bear. It's just a fact. They have to be or they can't be doing comedy. In comedy, you have to be at least a notch or two above your audience. And their audience is the average American. I rest my case. <laughs> They see the absurdity in everything, everywhere, all the time. They can't help it, it's a curse. And when you see enough of that, you start to get pretty skeptical about things. So they're thinkers. And a lot of them only work nights, so their days are free. <laughs> That's a dangerous combination. A tendency to think, and the time to do it. <laughs> and to read. They read a lot. They have to write material all the time, and a lot of information has to keep going in for the jokes to keep coming out. I guarantee you that most of the people in this book read a lot more than you do, and you're reading this, so I know you're someone who reads. <laughs> Now, I know that all of the above would immediately disqualify someone from holding elected office in this country because it's elitist. <laughs> and I know that this country feels the most important quality for leading the most powerful military in history is that the leader be someone they could sit and have a beer with and relate to. <laughs> Call me crazy, I prefer whoever's running things to be out of my league and to relate more to the president of China than to me, but apparently I'm not a core voter for anybody. <laughs> But guess what? You can sit and have a beer with anybody in this book. Except the ones who went through rehab, but that's okay, they'll just have a soda or something. <laughs> These are not power brokers or politicians. They are regular people. Some of them are rich, but they got rich because America loved their comedy and guess what? Related to them. So don't let their intelligence or the fact that they're well-read and think a lot stop you from listening to what they have to say. <laughs> Try and look past all that. <laughs> Um, yeah. Ba, ba, ba. Okay, so that's the basic premise of the book. <laughs>